Welcome to Grand Prairie Update. I'm Terry Briggs. And I'm Don Johnson. Here's what's happening in your city. The Grand Prairie City election on May 5th includes three council seats and the city charter amendment. In District 5, Juan Perez, Cole Humphreys, and Bill Moser are running for the seat being vacated by long-term incumbent Tony Shotwell. The winner will serve for three years. In District 6, incumbent Jeff Woldridge is seeking another three-year term against Keith Walker. And in District 8 at large, incumbent Greg Gessner is being challenged for another three-year term by Aurelio Castillo and Johnetta Milner. Voters will also decide a proposed amendment to the city charter that removes the 30-year restriction for franchises or leases on city property. Early voting is available from April 23rd through May 1st. On Election Day, the polls are open from 7 a.m. until 7 p.m. For more information, contact the City Secretary's Office. <laughs> Grand Prairie Police are getting an early Christmas gift. <laughs> Nearly five dozen children's bicycles are being donated to Santa Cop, a program that gives toys, gifts, and food to Grand Prairie families who need help during the holidays. Put the big one over there? Yeah. The girls' and boys' bikes are coming from Diamond Wishes, a Cedar Hill charity that helps children across North Texas. We raise around 100,000 toys a year, and uh, Grand Prairie Santa Cop is one of the things that we just are very passionate about. And uh, the more kids we can uh, not only reach out to but touch, it's a great Christmas. Officials say the gesture will have a big impact. Last year alone, uh, I think total we only had 50 bikes. Today, on just this delivery we got 55 bikes so this for the Santa Cop program is a huge impact uh, because this is the first delivery we're in you know April and uh, we've already got 60 bikes which totals our total number for last year so hopefully the donations will keep coming in and the number of bikes will grow and then that way we can give more bikes to more kids uh, for Christmas. If you'd like to help the Santa Cop program visit gpsantacop.org. It is the latest example of the City of Grand Prairie's ongoing commitment to take it to the streets when it comes to public art. Citizens and visitors alike can now experience the eye-catching results of a project commissioned by the City's Downtown Development Task Force and brought to life at the intersection of 2nd and Main Streets. That's where a crew of specialists worked meticulously for two days, installing street art on the east to west crosswalks on both sides of the intersection, transforming them into the most unique and attractive in the entire city. The installation process is an adaption to existing thermoplastic technology that is used by many cities to mark their streets. The crosswalk art was created and designed by Dallas artist Ricardo Pinoa. When people are walking, there's a meditative quality. So I'd imagine that people would be able to walk across this and look at it and see d different patterns, overlapping patterns. And it's only my hope as a designer to have people stimulated by it in whatever part of their brain. The new downtown crosswalks give Grand Prairie yet another first when it comes to public art and the project is only the second of its kind in all of North Texas. We're an art-friendly city. Uh, we're really excited to have local artists provide kind of a fun twist for the community to come out and take pictures to really enjoy the outdoors and walk up and down our main street. The next art project on the Downtown Development Task Force's agenda is mural art. Grand Prairie is about to use a new technology to fix the old levee at its landfill. The levee was built in the mid-80s to keep the Trinity River out of the landfill and keep the landfill out of the river. It's done the job during those years, but now erosion has reached the point where repairs are necessary. To solve the problem, the city is hiring Ercon Technologies to build a Palisades structure. The company's patented system uses enormous nylon webbing that is attached to steel piers driven deep into the riverbanks. The webbing snags material from the river, causing deposits that create a natural barrier to prevent more damage to the levee. Officials say the system is as effective as traditional concrete or wooden barriers, but less expensive. 
levy repair projects can run easily two million dollars on a on a levy this size. This project is actually uh, a little kinder and gentler. It's also five hundred and forty-five thousand. So clearly, this was the most affordable solution that was really going to net us some good results. The Palisades installation is supposed to start next week, and if everything goes as planned, the levy repairs will be completed in May. That's it for this edition of Grand Prairie Update. Hope you'll join us next time.